Hey, what's up, guys? A new mortar deck just popped to the top of Clash Royale. The rank 56 player in the world is using this mortar minor poison deck with double invisibility. Most minor poison decks make you fully commit to defense while you gradually chip down towers with minor and poison as your only source of damage. But this deck is built different with built-in bridge spam. Because of the invisibility, Archer Queen and Royal Ghost can get ludicrous value at low health. While barely staying alive, they can make your opponent's elixir bar take a dive. And when opponents find themselves in perilous positions with the minor in the back of the tower, the mortar at the bridge, and then the Royal Ghost and Archer Queen in front being invisible, it's really hard to defend everything at once. And all it takes is one crack in their defense for you to crack down their tower. Because once you get a damage advantage, Minor Poison with Evolve Zap is the best way to get direct damage and win the spell cycle race. If you only have one evolution, use the Evolved Mortar. And if you don't have Evo Zap, use Log or Snowball. It's time to level up Minor Poison on a mission to make our opponent's towers invisible to assert dominance. And massive mortar love to everyone that's using Crater Code Surtag to make all the daily videos possible. Possible. Yo, we're playing against someone that finished 161 in the world. So we're playing against a talented top 200 player right out of the gate. Y'all already know we're rushing through their mortar because that's the evolved card in our deck that really packs a punch. And if we see a bomber paired with an electric dragon, it has to be a golem deck. There's a chance that it's something else like an elixir golem deck, but I'm generally going to be playing against a regular vanilla golem in this type of matchup. I don't think that we're going to activate King Tower with this Ice Spirit. I could have dropped it with a little bit of a better timing, but it is what it is. He's actually going to go for an Elixir Collector here, and he could Tornado on top of the Miner. Hopefully, he doesn't do that. Okay. Thankfully, he doesn't have Tornado in his deck, or I guess he didn't want to, because he would have taken so much damage from the Ghost. We're looking like a pretty good spot for us, because we're up in damage. We are able to Poison on the Elixir Collector, so that's a negative one trade for us. So, it seems like I'm down Elixir in an aggregate, though. The other thing is, I believe the Cannoneer can melt the rest of the Skeleton King. If I go for guards, it could be worth it, but I can't guarantee it. Just wanted to wait the last possible second to maybe egg this guy on to antagonize him to go for the ability because he saw the Skeleton King so close to our tower. And if he had done that, I would have been able to go for a zap, and that would have been a pretty good trade. Two elixir from his ability, two elixir for our zap. And guess what? Our zap is able to cycle towards the evolution. All right, so I'm going to go for the mortar here. It's going to be a pretty good pull. I think I need to go in for an ice spirit and then a poison. So in this situation, it's important that we don't let this Archer Queen die. The Archer Queen needs to stay alive and melt the rest of this Night Witch. The Night Witch dies and we're fine. I also probably want to go for a zap, but I don't want to just from a sense of like conserving Elixir. It would have made sense to keep the Archer Queen alive and healthier, but we can still keep her alive with a Miner in front. You guys might be wondering, why are you doing this, Jake? Why would you ever go in for a Miner in front when you have to go and counteract the Elixir Collector? But if I can keep the Miner and the Archer Queen alive a little bit longer, then he has to spend Elixir so he's not able to go for the Elixir Collector. That was our strategy. It still didn't work out as planned, but... It was okay, you know, like because of our quick card cycle, I'm able to get back to a miner with a couple more cards. So I'm going to go for the mortar here, and then I'm going to go and cycle guards, and then I'm going to be back to a miner to go and combat his elixir collector. That's our strategy here. Sometimes it's just full on offense until you get the right opportunity. I'm going to drop the miner on top of the elixir collector. We know that if he decides to go for evil bomber, it's going to do a lot of damage towards my tower because it's a broken card, even after the multiple nerfs. Like I was going to say multifarious, and I said multiple. It was only like one or two nerfs it was two nerfs total they nerfed it before it was added into the game and then they did another nerf where its range was decreased but it's still broken it's still beyond unfair for two elixir to do that amount of damage to my tower i just don't even understand anyway we're gonna go in for a mortar here and then i can go in for a miner in the back and the bad thing is like this is a big push coming from him 50 seconds would be scary but fortunately for us we only have like 20 seconds to hold on i believe that we can do it i'm gonna go for the poison right now i'm gonna get back to another mortar the cool thing about our deck is it is mortar mayhem you are able to amaze your opponent with a maze of units that they always have to break through. And as long as the Evolved Bomber can't lock into our tower, there's no way in heck that he's going to be able to do enough damage in two seconds. Right? Oh, wait, that was a lot closer than I thought. <laughs> I didn't actually realize that the Evolved Bomber had his bomb bouncing in on our tower there. But luckily, the tower in the left-hand side from our opponent was also at 400 HP, so it just took like one more minor poison for us to secure the bag. I always feel pretty fortunate to match into top 200 players running Golem decks. Because whenever I'm running a control deck and I play against a beatdown deck, no matter how good they are, I'll always have an advantage. The cheap cycle cards create chaos that no big beatdown deck can ever keep up with. And after reducing that golem deck to rubble without too much trouble, we gotta swap out the cannoneer for the princess tower to show the more accessible version of the deck. Yo, we're playing against a 441 player in the world. Y'all already know if his name is gonna be install. I just think that he's gonna be installing some ridiculously aggressive offense. Most people on ladder, when they're high ranked and they're pushing up for the first time in the season, towards the end of the season, they generally are going to be running some really aggressive decks so they can climb up trophies quickly. Just going to fireball. I wonder if I can get the miner down so the Archer Queen doesn't get targeted, and that's exactly what we were hoping for. So, fortunately for us, we got the miner body blocking for the Queen. 
Then we also have another layer of defense if we could decide to go for the ability, but wasn't able to do that there. I'm gonna go Battle Ram. I think it's gonna be better for us to just go in for a Mortar here. And we're gonna activate King Tower with that. It's an unorthodox Mortar placement because if you think about it, it wasn't necessarily gonna be able to hit our opponent's tower. But if it accomplishes the King Tower activation, that's all we really care about. I don't think zapping is great, but I'm gonna do it anyway just so I can be able to cycle a little bit faster and get to the evolution. I'm gonna Ice Spear anyway on the Ghost. That doesn't really matter. The Ghost should die. Notice where we drop the Ice Spear. We drop it up as high as possible. If you drop the Ice Spear closer to your tower, the Ghost gets noticed right next to your tower, and then your Princess Tower doesn't have that much time to kill the Ghost. You wanna make sure that the Ghost is discovered as far away from your tower as possible, so then your Princess Tower has a lot of time to damage it down. Also, I want to go in for a Royal Ghost directly on top of the Firecracker again. And this time we're going to be able to shut it down, hopefully, with only one hit on our tower. Um, that's not that bad. He is going to have P.E.K.K.A. Dang it. All right, so this is one of those situations where I want to be able to get a lot of damage with the Evolve Mortar. It's going to be harder for us to find opportunities to get damage with our Minor Poisons unless we reach the later parts of the game. Because if he goes in for P.E.K.K.A. or if he goes in for, like, I don't know, a Bandit, there's a lot of different things that he could do at his disposal to be able to finish off our Miners fast. We're going to Ice Spirit here, and we're going to go for our Ghost. And I think that we might even have to go for a Zap to guarantee that the P.E.K.K.A. dies. This is super sketchy because if you guys notice the Archer Queen dropped at the river, that's going to make me drop guards as well. So I'm literally at zero elixir right now because he's trying to zero my health. Please stop with the insane bridge spam, my guy. It's really smart of you to do that, and I don't like that you're doing that to me. So we can Mortar on the other side, and the reason that we're drawing that there is it still locks onto the tower that we want, and it's going to be going opposite lane of our opponent and pulling the battle room as far as possible. Then we're going to go in for a ghost, and then I think we have to Evo Zap on the skeletons, unfortunately. I was optimistic that I wouldn't have to waste Evo Zap, but it was a necessity for us to not lose the game. All right, so now our strategy is finally fully formed in fruition. If I'm able to go in for guards and then I'm able to go for a mortar here, we know that he's going to be down a lot of elixir, and if he tries the firecracker, it's not going to work out so well. We do have the Miner to kill the Firecracker quickly, and then we can should just be able to go for guards, not take any damage from the P.E.K.K.A., kill the Royal Ghost, and plop down all of our Elixir right into the Queen. If he doesn't go in for anything to protect the Queen, then he's going to lose, but if he does protect the Queen with the ability, then I guess he's not going to be able to stop the Mortar. So he has to pick. What does he want to do? Preserve the Queen or his Tower. And he chooses to take a ton of Tower damage straight to the face. Again, we're going to be able to go and pull the Battle Ram from the right-hand side to the left-hand side, and the Mortar should be able to hit the Tower if he doesn't go for a Firecracker, and he does waste a Firecracker. Again, this guy is consistently getting bad trades. If you go for a, for a Ghost plus Miner at the River, that's one of my favorite plays to do when they're down Elixir, because if they drop bait cards like Skeletons, it's not going to be able to defend the Ghost. And if they do that, then they have no Elixir to counter the Miner, and it's just, it's awful, right? He wasn't able to defend anything there. The Miner of the Poison was direct guaranteed damage, while the Ghost got an up-close-and-personal spook, slicing up our opponent's tower with his sword. So we're starting off strong with one of the best starting hands with the Mortar. Cycling that at the start right into Wallbreakers is a negative two trade, but our Mortar is still alive, so I think that's a good decision for us to go and drop it. Also, being able to dedicatedly drop an Evolution and get to that a little bit quicker, even if it is a negative trade, most times it's pretty good. He might Mega Knight here. I bet you he does. Yeah. You know, when I see Wallbreaker cycled first play, it's either a Minor Poison cycle deck or it's going to be a masterful Mega Knight, sir. So we're going to go for a Guard Surround on top of the Mega Knight, and then I want to go for Minor in the back. We're going to get ready because one of the Guards is going to die, and then the other two will survive, and then we could go for a Zap on top of Bats or a Goblin Gang like that. That's even better. Yo! That is enormous amount of damage. That is crazy. Wow, we love that. I also love doing accents. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a Viber. Oh my goodness, don't do that to me. Please, Archer Queen, one more time. Yes. The fact that the Archer Queen was able to one-shot the Wall Breakers paired with the Ice Spirit meant that we didn't have an utter disaster on our hands. It's usually, like, going to be a Mega Knight here, but after dropping the Drill and all that stuff, he doesn't have Elixir. So he's going to lose the Bandit right before it charges. We drop our ability. We force out a Goblin Gang as well. And then we can go in for a Royal Ghost. Reason why I go for a Ghost is because it consistently baits out extra Elixir that our opponent doesn't want to drop. Like, I don't think he's able to Mega Knight on that. He doesn't have Elixir for it. If he goes in for Bats, we're able to Zap. Yep, I knew that. So, keeping our opponent's Elixir low means that he can't Mega Knight. So, then he's forced to drop Bait Cards. But if he drops Bait Cards, and we've got spells like Zap and Poison, and we also have, like, Ice Spirit, it's really difficult for him to get cost-effective defenses. When he's facing a Royal Ghost, and he drops a Goblin Gang, he has to surround it perfectly. He can't go for Bats, because they're going to get destroyed by all of our spells. It was really fun to do that type of mechanism. If he Mega Knights here, sure, he's able to hit the guards, and then it will eventually go back towards the Miner, but he's still guaranteed to take 200 damage every time. It's not a lot of damage, but it's something worth uh, while investing into for us. All right. 
if I go in for a mortar here, the Mega Knight's not going to jump, so that's huge. And then we can go in for the Evolve Zap, pop the ability here. Because I think the Mega Knight just dies before it even gets anything. Who needs a little Prince ability when you've got Archer Queen plus Evolve Zap? That thing is broken, especially since I can get two abilities here. I should be able to pop a second one in a second. So that means that the Mega Knight's just going to die to the Archer Queen. Did we just kill two Mega Knights with one Archer Queen? The world may never know that this is just that strong, but it is. But yeah, we're going to eat the Wall Breakers. They don't really matter that much. We're dropping a Defensive Miner. That should be more than enough to clean up the Goblins. And then I can Poison to deliberately finish off that Firecracker without it splashing onto my tower. Okay, so this guy is starting to get a little bit, I don't know, unruly, uncivilized with the spam on both sides. That is exactly what he should be doing if he's trying to win this game. So we're going to go for a Wall Breakers counter, possibly with a Rogue Ghost. He doesn't drop Wall Breakers. He actually goes in for a Drill, so a little bit annoying that he's doing this. I uh, don't appreciate this behavior. I'm going to go for a Zap, and then we can go in for probably... A counter with a Goblin Drill if he decides to do it. Is he going to? Yeah, this is bad. This is actually really bad. We got to go in for Wall Breakers counter with guards as well. I don't know if this is going to happen for us. We might have just lost. We might have taken a gigantic L. I don't know if we're going to be able to stop the Firecracker that's going to come down in a second. Wait, do I win or do I lose? I don't know anymore. This is so wacky and weird and I just want to whack him. Please don't let me lose this game. Please. One more hit. Just one more hit game. Just one more. The Zap's going to come down, and it barely does enough for us to win the game. Wow, we've had some close ones today, and I can't believe, since we played well at the start, we were able to pull it out at the end. I'm not going to lie, the Archer Queen that killed two Meganates was definitely the MVP of the match. And without that ridiculous Pause Elixir Trade Snatch, I can guarantee you I would have lost that one. In my opinion, Archer Queen is the best champion in the game, and it is severely underplayed. It's time to see if Red King is ready for our aggression. I'm going to go for a Royal Ghost at the start, and we're ready to royally spam on both sides. So I'm going to go for the Mortar in the right, and then the Royal Ghost in the left is probably going to force out some nice amount of Elixir. Definitely want to go in for a Zap if he's going to be dropping other bait cards nearby. But if that's not the case, I can just get away with guards and finish off his Firecrackers or whatever else he wants to drop with that Little Prince. Doesn't seem like he's a Firecracker type of guy. There's been a lot of Firecrackers in the meta recently, so I think I'm just kind of a nerd to play against it. I'm thinking about it every single game. I'm like, well, there's going to be a Firecracker, even though there won't be. So we're going to zap on the bar barrel so it doesn't do any damage to us. And we can go for a ghost in the back here. So we see Little Prince, Barbarians, and a bar barrel from our opponent. It seems like to me it's going to be a graveyard deck. So I'm not going to be willy-nilly throwing my graveyard counter like a poison or guards out at the same time. I will always have one of them in my hand. Wait, never mind. This guy is going to be running a golem deck. Wow. Throwing it back to the first game. But this time we don't have Cannoneer. So in this matchup, it will be significantly more sticky for us. I'm going to go in for the Miner, and I'm going to pop through with the ability. Because the ability should be able to shatter any expectation of him keeping alive the Electro Dragon. Or maybe it will stay alive just long enough for us to activate King Tower. That's huge, baby. We take those. So we're going to wait for the first shot to go through, and then the second one is the one we activate King Tower with. And the reason why we do that is we can actually keep the Ice Spirit alive. If we dropped it on the first one, it would have gotten hit by the second shot, and it would have died. But keeping it alive give us a little bit of a micro advantage, making sure that we have the Ice Spirit alive to jump on top of the Barbarians. It might not seem like much, but it's a big mental edge on your opponent. It's showing that your mechanics are clean, and also making them just take more damage on the Barbarians is nice because now the Ghost is alive. And then these interactions start to snowball in your favor. Imagine if the Ghost wasn't alive at 1 HP. We wouldn't have gotten that 300 damage advantage. And then we wouldn't have been able to force out extra Elixir. We wouldn't get in this spot where we're currently winning by quite a wide margin now. So it's just small interactions like that, being slightly better than your opponent, or just making that slight outplay to get those advantages that set you far apart. All right, we're trying to go for a defensive mortar here. I hate, I hate using my evil mortar on defense. It's such a good card on offense, and it feels like you're wasting the goblins. But it is what it is. It needed to be done for maximum fun for us, so we don't lose the game. I want to pop the ability here so we can keep the Archer Queen as healthy as possible. And he's going to go for a knight, but he misses. That means that we're getting a pretty profound opportunity to go in for more mortars. I'm going to go in for the Ghost instead of dropping an Ice Spirit because I think the Ice Spirit would just die to the Little Prince ability anyway. I could go for a Zap here as well to finish off the Little Prince guaranteed. And he's going to go for the Electro Dragon. So not looking super spicy for me. But I did activate King Tower, so there is that. Also, in this type of matchup, going opposite lane isn't that bad. So I think we might redirect our attention there just because it's significantly harder for us to find damage into the Golem. So we'll see what we can do. The Electro Dragon now is something that we can ignore. I do want to go for a defensive mortar here, but I also want to go for Archer Queen first so we can cycle more mortars. If you cycle the Archer Queen on the map, you're engaging in a three-card cycle. 
because you can't get multiple champions on the map. So it lets you get back to the card that you want to get back to a little bit faster. Now we're able to go for the Evo Zap here, pop the Archer Queen ability, and then hopefully have a target marked on our opponent's back. He is not going to get through with this attack. So, as I said before, going opposite lane is a little bit better, but because he overcommitted really aggressively there, I think it's going to be better for us to continuously go same side now, especially since it's at 2,500 health. Going opposite lane right now, I don't think would make that much sense. But if I have the ability to, I will go opposite lane 90% of the time. I'm also going to get that mortar to connect to the tower, so that's huge. We can go in for a poison directly on top of all this stuff. We're totally anticipating him to spam more stuff here. But if the Archer Queen can just melt the Electro Dragon and the Little Prince, then I'm a very happy camper. Camping out on this side of the map with our mortar while we just engage in a full offense aggression. Also, the Archer Queen staying alive is huge. I think that we can get an ability down if we're just lucky enough. That would be massive, and I don't know. Oh, no. Ornor! Ornor for all the Australians out there! This is not going to go well. We're going to be turned into a kangaroo punching bag real soon. Those barbarians are looking real mean. Also, I want to travel around the world, so hopefully I get to meet you guys in Australia one day. We're going to go in for a poison here, and we're going to be able to hit most of the barbs. Not all of them yet, but hopefully they can wander into there. They're going to get real adventurous in the wrong way. Okay, 20 seconds remaining. I need to go and cycle some defensive mortars. The pop the Archer Queen ability. We're definitely going for a zap so we can kill this. Oh my gosh, it didn't die. That sucks. All right, I think we're okay. Maybe we can find a way to defend this. So he's not able to break through with the Electro Dragon. The King Tower activation was huge. Even the King Tower activation against the Electro Dragon early on enabled us to have a, just a more reliable defense for the rest of the match. This wasn't an easy game. It was hard to break through because he had so many good cards to counter our miners. Whether it was, you know, using the King Tower activation of his own, using the Knight or Barbarians, we weren't able to find that much damage. Also, having the Electro Dragon that we weren't able to counter because we can't really remove it, and then also the Little Prince to capitalize on our Mortar, meant that we had to really have a battle of attrition to win. Forcing us to go into Hibernation Tower Defense Mode for the entire match. If I messed up my mechanics once on defense, I would have gotten melted. And if you play the game well, even without Cannoneer, you'll watch Golden Deaths crumble. Yo, we got a game against another P.E.K.K.A. player in the banner, and he's an American killer. Here's Johnny. Bro, don't kill me like that. Why are you like this? All right, so uh, apparently we are planning to get someone with super effective moves into me. So definitely want to make sure that I tread carefully and cautiously as I spend my elixir. So he's going to go for guards and skeleton king, which makes me feel like we might be playing against someone with a royal giant deck. If it's not royal giant, I don't really know what else it could be. Maybe it's going to be a weird goblin drill deck that we haven't seen the likes of before. It could also end up being a graveyard deck. Or, I mean, it could be RG as well. There's a lot of different things that this guy could be playing. Anyway, I want to go in for an Archer Queen at the river, and then I want a Miner in the back. And the reason is, when the Archer Queen goes invisible, then the Miner is going to be the primary target of the tower. Meanwhile, anything that he tries to defend with should get slaughtered by this Archer Queen. If the Archer Queen stays alive, one more... Oh my gosh! If that stayed alive, he would have lost everything. I bet you I could have timed the zap perfectly to stop one of the guards' attacks and then make sure that the Archer Queen survives. And then that would have been like, I don't know, 700 extra damage. Would have been insane. Anyway, we're going to go for a Mortar. He's probably going to Royal Giant this in two seconds. Yeah, Archie is a tough thing. When you're playing Mortar, you're kind of going to get slapped by a Siege card from across the river too. And you're like, well, that's not what we like to see. We like hurting you with our Mortar and not getting destroyed by something from across the river. You can't steal our strategy. All right. Fortunately, we didn't die to that RG. I was like, wait, is that going to get a hit? That was one of the sketchiest situations I've seen all day. I was like, every game so far has been pretty weird and sketchy. I don't need more sketchy situations with an RG menacingly approaching my tower like that. Oh, wait, that almost locked tower, but he got guards down in the nick of time. Okay, so because his elixir is pretty low, I want to test the waters here with the mortar on the right-hand side. This mortar is definitely going to come down before he's able to afford his royal giant. Just because he ended up dropping that amount of elixir, I felt like we were going to get something. But he's not in Tesla! What are you doing? Are you joking? Tesla is also one of the best answers of the game to our mortar. We still played better than him and found damage because we forced out extra elixir on the left-hand side. And then getting that opportunity, now, theoretically, we should be able to defend with defensive mortars the entire match and then minor poison him out. But that's not how I play Clash Royale. If you guys have watched this channel, you know I go full-on aggression because that's what's more fun for me. But I just wanted to tell you distinctively, if you guys want to play at a higher level, it is better to not do what I'm about to do right now. So we're going to go for a poison, and I'm going to go in for an Ice Spirit plus guards. It's just way more fun to do this because we are going to be able to stop the RG from... Oh, wait, the Electric Dragon kind of killed. He's now going to go arrows. Okay, I'm kind of stupid. I was hoping that would do a lot more damage than it did, and it just got shut down for a really bad trade. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of boring just having easy games. It's, uh, it's nice to 
you know, make it a little bit more entertaining, obviously. Feels bad, man. All right, we're gonna go Archer Queen here. And we should be able to slaughter this uh, Skeleton King quite quickly. And then if he goes in for a Royal Giant, it's fine. Wait, there's a strategy. If we go for a poison and this Archer Queen gets pulled closer to his tower, then we go in for a zap. This Archer Queen's gonna lock into the tower, right? There's no way, there's no way, please. Come on, Archer Queen. Yes, it's on the tower because of his fisherman. I'm so glad that that worked out. It was a meme strategy. It wasn't the smartest thing in the world, but it makes the game so much more fun to be able to pull off plays like that. Meanwhile, now we can do the despicable strategy of just poisoning and evolve zapping him down until he's dead. That is how you're supposed to play this deck when you get the evolved mortar connection, you make an outplay, then you win the game with the skillful spell cycle of minor poisons and evolved zaps. But if you want to have a little bit more fun with me, because this deck is so overpowered, you're allowed to mess with your opponents a bit too. Even in the face of someone with a Royal Giant and Tesla, it's just supposed to completely counter you. And Mortar Miner Poison is making moves up the leaderboard up a few hundred medals. This was one of the most fun decks that I used to push up all season. Slap the like button with the shovel if you enjoyed today's video, subscribe for more daily content, and have an amazing rest of your day.